Aquatics. Hey, what's happening guys? It's Mark back in the shrimp room on Mark's Aquatics. I've got some exciting news guys. We've got, well we did have, we had some eggs. We had some a little clutch of eggs hatched from the zebras in one of the pots. Now I didn't realise this had happened. It's their first time breeding so they lay, they're not laying as many as they would do obviously once they get going. This was a bit of a trial run. Sometimes they can be unfertile but in this case they were fertile and I looked in there with the briefly with a torch just to have a quick look in there don't really like to do it that much it's better to do it with a camera flash and just one big flash as they that can mimic lightning in the wild so they, they'll put up with that but you can they can eat the eggs quite easily if you disturb them too much when you start poking around in there with the light because they think they've been discovered and all that stuff and they'll they'd rather put those nutrients back into their body than a predator take them so um, they'll eat the eggs anyway so the story goes I was looking in there and I saw about four maybe five eggs and he was looking after them she was in the tub as well in the tube and um, they're in there again which is nice to see and then I came I came yesterday no sorry it was the day before yesterday I came into the shrimp room here had a look around really excited to see if they were still there and they'd gone and I was like oh no so I think my torch may have may have just just discouraged them a bit and they got a bit spooked and maybe they because but all of a sudden then one little egg popped out from the hide and I had a look at it and I looked at it and it was actually had a little wriggler on there so he they had them in there longer than I thought so they had just probably hatched and he panicked and he probably ate them and there was one left and I can show you because I've saved this little guy and if we go up here look at that thinning away a little tiny baby zebra pleco and I could not be happier I really couldn't I've been after breeding these ever since I was a little nipper and I finally got some and I bred I don't care if it's one or a hundred it makes no difference to me we've done it we've got a baby out and touch wood now he's going to survive I don't know if I can get you any closer it just goes a little bit out of focus but you can see him he's got his egg sac still very very actively swimming away I tried to put him back into the pot but they wouldn't it, they just wafting their fins about and they just pushed him back out again so I've um, I put him in this little this little holder now on the top my old GoPro lid and I've just clamped that on there and it's got some very fine holes in it which let the air and I'm doing a, I'm doing like 50 water percent water change from in and out of the tank two or three times a day just to refresh that water constantly and he seems to be doing well I'm putting on quite a lot of weight quite quickly so that egg sac was is literally shrunk by half since he's been in there so he seems to be doing well anyway guys that's amazing news I'm so happy about that really really am we've got a baby on the go they're in their pot yet again I'm not going to put any lamps on I'm not going to do anything now because they may I've just put a heap of blood worm in there for them to eat that'll condition them up ready to breed again it shouldn't be too long, maybe a week, maybe another week and they'll have another brood in there which will be absolutely fantastic and I can stay out the way then and let nature take its course, I'm not going to interfere with them whatsoever but we've had a result now we definitely know we've got a pair in there and so if she likes now she can skip, she can lay some eggs in there as we know the males look after the babies and um, so she can come from that pot now into next door and into one of the other guys who lives over there, you see all the blood worm on the floor which the shrimp happily like picking up as well. Sorry about the glare guys, but this room is murder for glare. It really is. But that's something that we've got to put up with here, sadly. So there you go, there's... Um, we have a result. Yes guys, look at that. Baby, baby zebra pleco, L046. Keep on finning little guy and stay strong and we'll have you in this tank and we'll grow you up. There he goes, he's off for a little swim around the bottom there. It's amazing how, um, it really is amazing how adapt these little guys are. As soon as they hatch out, as soon as they get their tails, that little engine starts up, that tail starts going and by wriggling that tail, they're building muscle from that yolk sac and all those little nutrients which are packed into there in the egg and they're utilizing that so the more exercise they do the bigger and the quicker they grow 
fantastic stuff, really is. Super excited, yes! Right, I think we'll leave these guys to it. We'll leave little man up here, or little girl. Just giving her another little water change as well. She's waving goodbye, there you go, bye bye. We'll see you again next time and hopefully you'll have grown a bit more. If you're new to the channel guys, hit that subscribe button and the old notification bell for up and coming videos. And you won't miss any that way. And we'd love to have you on board. We've got a great little community here. Lots of you are chatting away and it's fantastic. It's really nice to have such a nice gang of guys on board. It really is. You're all stars, you know that. Anyway, we'll have a look at the little baby shrimps while we're here and the baby better. We'll pop across from their tank. I built that slate hide the other day for the lemon plecos, the, uh, the blue-eyed lemons. So hopefully they're going to go in and use that. If you want me to put the video up on how I made that, drop me a comment below, tell me you want to see how I made it, and I will gladly put the video up. We've got lots and lots of baby betters in here, hiding in amongst the uh, this dwarf water lettuce up here. You've just got to keep your eyes peeled, because they're like little tiny pinheads, they're all over the place they are. I've just bought, as well, five males nice bright red males to go in here you can see a lot of the babies now the little shrimplets there are colouring up lovely which is nice to see and everyone's putting on weight I've been putting in the Gen Chem Polites and the Bactery as well which is all great little cultures and bacterias and things in there which give them a good old gut kick start which really does save a lot of your shrimplets it really does that goes for all types of shrimp. Everything's looking healthy and green. The lemon plecos are doing really well. They tend to, the male, he's living inside that um, that log there. That's where he's taken up. He's taken up shop in there. Whether or not he'll move out and go into the hides, another story. But if he doesn't, the hides there if they want it. We'll have a look from the top now and we'll try and, I'll try and show you some of these baby betters because they really do like hanging around the surface of the, in the stiller parts around the water. There's a little guy there, look just zipping around. And I just dab the water worms in with a cotton bud on the surface and they get to work on them straight away. They get into a nice size now. There's another one, another one zipping around there. They're quite hard to see but once you get your eye in, you'll see them everywhere. Little darts, there's another little one there, right in the centre of the picture there. That dwarf lettuce is a, it's amazing stuff, or Amazon frog bit it's called, all kinds of different names for this stuff. I like a bit of duckweed in there as well. I remember one of my viewers, I think one of you guys out there asked me actually about the duckweed and you can actually, you can use it, you can you can blanch it, put it back into your shrimp tank and mix it in with some DIY shrimp food, like um, I've showed you to make on the other videos, which are always on there if you need to nip back and see how they're made. Another little guy there right in the middle, another one under the leaf. they're all under the leaves, they love to shelter under the leaves and pop out and grab little water worms as they come gliding past. Because they do stay up in the water column quite a lot, water worms. Brilliant stuff. A nice little cherry there, little baby cherry shrimp look there, right on the surface. Look. In a bit of that rick here. But going back downstairs. Yeah, I put six males in here. We've got a lot of saddled females now. You can see, you can see, oh, maybe not. You can see her at the back. And now I want to film one. There's a nice little example there before she swims over onto the top of that moss ball there. Where are you? There you are. Another one of the baby betters there, just swimming around in the roots. You can see the little stomachs there, stuffed with water worms. If you look carefully, you can see the water worms just floating around. 
Just floating around they are. I'll try and zoom back for you. You might be able to see them a bit easier. But I put them in at about 8 o'clock this morning and it's 20 past 12 now. You can see them all in amongst the roots. There's quite a few in here now. I couldn't hazard a guess at how many, but we'll soon know as they get as they start growing. And then we're going to have to thin them out. And then jar them up later on. Here's a nice example of a female that's um, dropped the eggs. You can see that lovely big dish scale, the second scale back on her tail. The big frying pan scale which tells you that it's a female. And that slight little hump in the back as well lets you know it's a female, guys, if you didn't know. And the males have got near enough equal segments going all the way back. If you look next in the third, the fourth, the fifth, they're like that all the way across that same kind of armour all the way down the back but um, the females have got obviously a wider abdomen so they can hold and house those little eggs underneath there she's watching her kids over there look on that leaf picking that Indian almond leaf clean look just leaving the little veins of the leaf we've got a few more of the girls along here I love watching them bulldoze away Just trying to hold this camera steady. That's better. Grabbing some bits, all the bits of detritus flying off behind her. But yes, hopefully the males now will get to work. And we'll have a lot more of these little guys coming on. I know a few of you have been asking me if I've got any shrimp for sale at the moment. I'm still really trying to breed them up and, um, and get some tidy colonies going before I start doing that and get a good strain going through cull a few out, put them in other tanks and just keep the best and keep breeding from them so I can give you guys some really nice quality ones and not the ones that you see a lot of people when you buy them in the shops they're not they're not the top grade shrimp they're just they're normally just the, the casts they just don't want and they just they're not they're not making the grade so they normally just bag them up and they sell them off and they're the ones that you normally get but once you start getting hold of some really nice nice quality cherries then um, then I'll start selling them things. I want you guys to start off with probably my finger there. I don't want you guys to start off with um, with some good stock, you know, some good stock straight away. You got one field female there look, which is up and this one coming onto the cucumber now, which is those big rams horns have scuffed the centre out. And um, it's come off that cucumber holder. But she's She's got a lovely saddle on her now. You can see the orange back on her, the orange saddle as it's called. And she's ready to... Um, might be easier to show you on this one here. You can see that big saddle on the back there. She's giving herself a little scratch on the back. A little bit of a clean. And then she's off. Yep, that's one thing I love guys. Is when you've got a tank like this and everything in there you put in some breeding adults and then within a matter of weeks you get so much life pop up into the tank I mean the baby betters are in there now the baby shrimplets are in there won't be long before those uh, blue-eyed lemon plecos breed hopefully touch wood and there's always something going on and it's lovely to have a busy tank nice healthy busy tank plenty of water changes keep it looking nice Here, there you go, there's a good example of a saddled female. You see those orange ovaries in the back there. And what the male will do, he'll go up to her, they'll go abdomen to abdomen underneath, he will pass across a little packet of sperm to her, and then she will hold that with her back legs by the, by the vent, and then she'll pass the eggs through that, and then stick them up to her swimmers. And that's how they, uh, and that's how they breed. And then you see those berries. So once you've got berries up there, they're not going to be up there unless they're fertilised. So as soon as you see berries up there, you know they're guaranteed to be fertilised eggs. And you're away. Another couple of months, this tank is going to look like a cherry storm. There's going to be that many in there when every one of these babies gets to the size of an adult. 
it's there's going to be quite a few and they are prolific breeders guys so if you're new to uh, shrimp keeping hobby cherries are amazing ones to start with because you can go to your local shops if you're lucky you can buy some with berries on already um, there is a touch and go you know when you're buying them with berries because they don't travel and they don't tend to survive as well as as young shrimp if you want to start off your own colony I would suggest buying young ones and then they're going to adapt a lot better to your um, to your surroundings than one that's quite old they tend to they don't t tend to tolerate that so much cherries aren't too too bad neocaridinas aren't too bad but when you get into the caridina species um, they're a lot more finicky to keep but obviously the pHs are quite different as well where these will you could you can keep these guys in a bucket quite easily you know it's I don't mean that literally but you know it's just a <laughs> it's just a term that you they're, they're very very easy to keep so they're really good ones for you to start and you've got the yellow sakuras like we've got in the uh, workshop you've got the velvet you've got the blues you've got oh, there's so many different types pumpkins there is some absolutely stunning colors there really is but starting off with the cherries is good breed a few sell a few back to your shop or get credit on them and then you can get yourself some different ones then and start up a few little tanks with a few little colonies and it's amazing fun it really is you can see those little little baby betters there look you can see those like little oxygen bubbles they look like all over the place the camera's not focusing on them because they're so small it wants to focus on the leaves but you can see all those little orange uh, sorry those little little pearls they look like I know one up there is a snail but most of them are little baby betters they just sat there waiting for their prey to drift past and they leap out and grab it here's one here quite close or is it there's one in the background it was one right in the foreground just then I thought I could show you but oh there he is there's a couple of them there I think But everything's healthy. I think I'm going to be back on the tools next, guys. I've had a bit of a break from the DIY stuff. I know a couple of you have been saying you're um, you're not doing as many DIY builds now, but it's it's been nice to have a little bit of this and a little bit of a break. So I had a bit of a mission on DIY builds. I love building stuff, as you know. And um, I got some other projects in the pipeline for you guys to see. A lot more how-to's, all that kind of stuff. If you up and uh, up and coming aquarists anyway guys I think I'll leave it on that one today I'll give you a last little look at um, the brand new addition to Mark's Aquatics our little L46 Pleco who I can't stop talking about absolutely stoked with him And let's hope everything goes well and he makes it through this stage. Anyway, guys, as always, your stars, love you loads. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my